Hi, my name is Pamela Fuseli, and I'm the host of Popping the Bubble Wrap. Are you the person in your family who worries about the safety of others, about buying safety products and using them? Are you yelling, yes, that's me? Then this is the podcast for you. Raising a child or children can be a hair-raising undertaking, and keeping them safe is your priority. Parachute's Popping the Bubble Wrap podcast explores what you really need to think about and provides easy tips on prevention strategies. No bubble wrap here, though. Car seats. We know they're important for our baby's safety, but one trip down a shopping aisle filled with them or scrolling through an online store can be confusing and frustrating. The first car seat you'll need after your child is born is rear-facing, which is what's recommended for infants and younger children. But what kind? How do you install it? How long do you keep using it? Why is rear-facing best? What are the laws? Today, we're going to talk it through everything you need to know about selecting, installing, and using a rear-facing car seat. Joining me today for the conversation are parents Katie and Jessica, as well as our expert Catherine Hutka, president of the Child Passenger Safety Association of Canada. Welcome, everyone. Hi. Thank you. Thanks for having us. So Katie and Jessica, you both have young children. Talk to me about rear-facing car seats. What has been your experience buying and installing your car seat? Did you have a wrestling match in the back seat when you were trying to get that thing into the back seat properly? Um, Jessica, maybe I'll start with you. I have a small car. So the first car seat that I ever bought actually didn't fit in my car. And I mm. didn't, I, I thought that I would be able to make it fit. But in the end, like I, there was no way to make it fit. And I did not expect that to happen. So I did have to purchase a different seat so that I could actually fit it in my car. And that was just like <laughs> a really big thing that I wasn't expecting to happen because it's a really big purchase, right? So to accidentally make a purchase that that large that doesn't work was a pretty big shock to me. Yeah, it's difficult. It's confusing. And you have to get the car seat into the car and the child into the car seat. So there's two yeah. different fits that you have yeah. to think about. And yeah, I think a lot of people wouldn't think about, would this fit in my car? They just uh, assume it, it did. Yeah. <laughs> Katie, what about you? What was your experience when you were uh, buying and or installing? <laughs> so I'm in a, the funny position of not having my driver's license. But I do have regular use of a car seat because I'll use it in Ubers or help put miles in the car when my husband's driving. And so for me, having a car seat that's really easy to take in and out is important because the first time I tried to take an Uber with a car seat, I mean, it was my mom and I in the back seat, each of us trying to buckle a different part of it. And it was a nightmare. So there was some wrestling involved. <laughs> Oh, yeah. None with my child, all with the car seat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Wrestling the car seat into submission. That scenario, you know, is a different, like, it's different than Jessica, you would have bought your car seat, put it in your car and not taken it out, presumably. Yeah. Um, as often as Katie, if you are using, you know, rideshare um, services, you'd have to take it out and put it back in. Have you, did you become an expert doing it that often? Or? Um, you know, I wish I could say yes, but absolutely not. Because <laughs> it's it's not, it's very complex. I mean, you'd think that, you know, after all these years of manufacturers making car seats, that they would have made, found a way at least to make it easier. So you talked a little bit about getting the car seat in the car. Jessica, what about getting um, Cameron into the car seat? How how did that um, work? Was that fairly it's easy? It's okay. Again, I have a small car, so I do struggle to kind of like fold my son up. He's two, um, so he's a little bit of a bigger boy. So I do have to like kind of roll him into a ball and get him in there because <laughs> there's not a lot of space. So I do occasionally knock his head on the door frame trying to get him in. <laughs> but um, he's really good. Once he's in, he lets me buckle him up and stuff. He's a really good boy, but it's just the mm -hmm. initial trying to squeeze him through this small opening. 
<laughs> it's the small opening of the door of the car that's the issue, yes, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Katie, what about you? How does Miles getting into the car seat or being in the car seat and you getting him buckled in properly? I mean, he loves his car seat. He loves it when it's out of the car. Getting him into the car, I think I have a very similar situation as Jessica. You know, you're always kind of avoiding the head and you don't always. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, how many of us haven't knocked our head what, one time or another getting into <laughs> a car? <laughs> um, Catherine, so rear facing is best. What are some of the common mistakes that... Uh, you see parents making when they're buying a car seat, when they're installing it um, for their child. We've heard uh, Jessica talk to us a little bit about, um, you know, not not realizing that not all car, fe- mm-hmm. car seats fit in cars. So I think there are two different things here. So like you were saying about like what kinds of errors that caregivers make when mm-hmm. it comes to installing, but you're right. There are some errors or some things that they may not be looking out for when purchasing a car seat as well. And how would you know? You don't know until you know, right? I think one of the things is really thinking about what are your needs? What do you need in a car seat Mm -hmm. rather than what, you know, what your friend or your cousin has, but what are you looking for in a car seat? Knowing that all of the car seats that are, you know, sold by reputable Canadian retailers are tested and meet very high Canadian standards for safety. And so really what you need to find is the car seat that's going to fit your child, your car, pretty key there, um, you know, the way that you're going to use that every day and your budget and that you're going to use on every ride. You know, like Katie has that that issue of every ride and it could be in a different car and it could be with Mm -hmm. a different, (laughs) you know, um, and carrying it in and out of cars. So I think just really thinking about what are your needs when it comes to a car seat? What do you need it to do? And so for Jessica, it sounds like she needs the smallest, most narrow, you know, front to back car seat. And so if she was shopping for an, for an infant seat for, you know, like, or a rear facing only seat, that seat with a handle, the bucket seat, you know, to bring home a baby, she would need to find that one that's the shortest that, you know, takes up the least amount of room front to back, um, or consider moving to straight to that convertible seat to that larger um, seat. And it sounds like you might have done that, Jessica. Yeah. I see you nodding there. Yeah. Is that the solution that you had? So you had like a really large um, infant yeah. seat, and then you moved to that yeah. larger rear facing convertible seat that, you know, strangely enough, was probably still shorter front to back because you chose one. You knew what you needed exactly, at that point. Is yes. that right? I got one that was yeah. a little more compact. So it worked better. Yeah, absolutely. And so that's a solution that some people use. Another solution sometimes um, if the if the car seat with the base doesn't fit in the car, um, some people could just use that car seat with the handle and they could put it in baseless if that's the car seat they have, um, you know, to use it until until they're ready to move to that larger rear facing convertible to to find a seat that's going to to figure out if that if the car seat will fit in their car um, when used without the base. So that's another possible solution. And then for I saw it heard for Katie, what she needs is something that goes in and out easily and quickly. And she probably is also looking for a, a feature of it being light and not too heavy when, Absolutely. you know, maybe you're carrying a kiddo on one hip and a car seat on the other if you don't have a partner who's with you, um, you know, hopping into an Uber. So you may want something that's lightweight and fairly straightforward and that goes in quickly in a few key strokes. So that's what you're <laughs> looking for because you want to get out of there and not wrestle with the car seat while also possibly wrestling with the baby <laughs> <laughs> who might be getting away. And so just knowing what you're looking for when you're going into it, because not all car seats can do all things, right? There's no one perfect car seat for anyone. Oh my goodness. What I would, you know, that the biggest question I have is please, can you just tell me what's the one perfect car seat? Just tell me. And then I'll, that I'll just, you know, like, that's all I need. I know you can't really say it, but please just tell me. And there isn't one. There really isn't, right? Like, Katie needs something that's lightweight and, you know, it's going to maybe last a long time because she wants to be able to use that in multiple cars in different places um, and is going to go in fairly easily. And Jessica needs that to be, you know, short and narrow and, and to fit in that tight space. And maybe that's going to mean that it's going to, but maybe she's never taken it out. So she can handle something that's bigger or bulkier, weighs more. Right. Um, but once it in, it's, it's in. So there's no one right car seat for all situations. Um, and so I think another mistake that that caregivers make is that um, 
you know, there's no one right car seat for all situations, but they're also not looking, maybe they're looking too far ahead when they're purchasing a car seat. And so mm. they want, so, sometimes I hear people who want the last car seat you will ever need, particularly people like Jessica, who have bought two car seats in the span of four months yeah. and are like, okay, this is the last one, the very last one. But, you know, it's, it's sometimes what you need now and for the next little while is more important than finding that car seat and, 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 you know, inappropriately expecting that car seat to meet all of your needs five or six years down the road as well. Right. Yeah, Catherine, I think that's a, a great point. And I see Jessica and Katie nodding <laughs> at a lot of what you said. But uh, and it's almost like you almost don't know what you don't know until afterwards, like, especially when it's your first baby, or you haven't had a baby mm -hmm. in a while, and you need mm -hmm. to refresh <laughs> on the rear facing and that that you almost have to go through it to be able to um, really look back and see what you needed to know. But uh, Jessica and Katie, is there anything that, that Catherine said that surprised you? Or uh, it, does that sound, you know, like what you experienced? Jessica, maybe you can start. Um, I think what she said made a lot of sense. Um, mm -hmm. I didn't think about like, I in my mind, I just got the seat that, you know, all your friends tell you to get without thinking like, that I needed to get one that specifically fit my needs. It totally makes sense, but it's not something mm -hmm. you think about in the time. Like you just, as a new mom, you're like asking mm -hmm. all your friends for advice and none of them tell you, they just tell you the one that they have that works for them. So yeah. In saying that. And they right. tell you that they yeah, love it. Of course. But yeah. They have a giant SUV. Yeah, exactly. All my <laughs> you <know>. friends have vans. <laughs> I have a small sedan. <laughs> yeah. Katie, what about you? I think it all made sense um, for me I was definitely one of those people who was looking for the one. And so it gave a lot of context to that. <laughs> you, you, Jessica, you started to talk about, you know, what, what was top of mind for you and where you, where you went for information like friends or the internet, because yeah. there's so much information about finding the right. And we talk about the right car seat. Um, and I think that's the key is it's the right car seat, not the one car seat yeah. or rear facing seat. And not uh, only is it the right car seat, but it's the right car seat for the right time. Yes. Right. So at this time in my life, this is how we're doing this. This is the vehicle I have. This is the size and weight and, and, you know, weight and development of my kiddo. This for this time, what's the right car seat for me? Mm -hmm. And then looking for those features that are going to make it last longer. Right. Once you find the car seat that is going to fit your needs for travel, mm -hmm. for space, mm -hmm. for, you know, all of those things, finding something that's going to last a little longer than the, than its neighbor. Right. Yeah. It's like a puzzle so that piece. has a higher weight or a higher height for rear facing and then a higher weight or a higher height for forward facing is, is pretty helpful. Yeah. It's like puzzle pieces that need to fit together. Yeah. <laughs> Katie, where did you go? Where did you go for the information? Did you did you talk to friends or did you search the Internet or what did you do f look when you were looking for did, information about? Yeah, I did a little bit of both. Um I'm very fortunate that my mom is actually a pediatric injury researcher. So I use her word as kind of the guiding light. Um, and so she, she goes by everything on parachute. That was the first link I got. That was all the information I read through. Uh, so parachute was definitely my number one, but that was through my mom. Right. Yeah, Jessica, you, you said so you asked a family friend. It just happened to be a very well connected and very knowledgeable, <laughs> you know, friend or mom. Yes, yeah. that's yeah, it's good to know. And uh, and you know, I wish more parents had direct access to that and and some of the other reputable places to find information like Child mm -hmm. Safety Link and the Child Passenger Safety Association. Yeah. Jessica, you talked about friends having, you know, you talk to them, they have different SUVs and uh, and yeah. you know, every kid is a bit different. Did you did you do any internet searching? Yeah, um I found like Facebook groups really helpful, like you can find mm. um like mm -hmm. car seat safety groups and like usually fairly good. Um for me, a lot of like trial and error I found helped for me, which isn't the best in this type of a situation, obviously. But um, like I had a couple friends come over and we all like played with each other's car seats and we we're just like trying to see what fit and stuff. So doing that was helpful to just kind of see how different things fit for all of us. I don't know. It was just. 
I think that's yeah. really yeah, helpful. It was I think kind of funny. It was like a play date. We're like, yeah, let's just so cool. take all of our seats out and like play with them and see like how they fit differently. <laughs> absolutely i think that's a great idea i mean i had to go find a seating solution for a kiddo um who was being discharged from the hospital today and i brought four solutions that we were gonna figure out what you know i don't know what the what the one right solution is i'm trying to you know if i've got those options i want to you know talk to the family see how the vehicle works see who else is riding in that car like all of those questions you know how does this how is this going to fit and fit their needs and their life right so uh no i think that's a great way to do it is to you know and even some technicians will uh, will keep a small collection so that people can try different car seats yeah. and they can, uh, you know, see what would fit in someone's car. That's great. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, um, Catherine, maybe I'll start with you and, and share with some suggestions about where to find some credible information. Nearly three decades ago, Amazon set out to be Earth's most customer-centric company, where people can discover and purchase the widest possible selection of safe and authentic goods. As part of that mission, they obsess over earning and maintaining trust by ensuring that they provide a trustworthy shopping experience. Amazon is dedicated to helping you make informed choices and use your purchases safely. Visit www.amazon.ca slash product safety and usage, and explore expert tips, articles, and videos from our partners to ensure a secure shopping experience. Okay, so before the break, we were talking about places that are credible. Um, Catherine, can you can you quickly list, uh, you know, two or three credible places for information, and we'll make sure that there's more resources in our show notes as well. Absolutely. So I think you'd already mentioned Child Safety Link, of course, which is the Children's Injury Prevention Center uh, based out of IWK Health. Um, Parachute. I know that uh, Katie had mentioned Parachute has some some lovely and up-to-date information on their website now as well about car seats. You can also find information on the Child Passenger Safety Association of Canada. But where you're going to find that parent sent information is actually finding someone who is local to you. There's a Find a Technician map. So that's a Child Passenger Safety uh, Technician technician in your area where you can ask those questions um, and just kind of find out, um, you know, what's local to you and where you can find more help in your community. And that's where you would find it. And I did hear from from Jessica as well, that there was some online Facebook groups where there are technicians that are based mm-hmm. around um, car seat safety in Canada. And that those can be really helpful um, sources of credible information as well. Whereas sometimes you find, you know, blogs and TikTokers, and some of them are really good and some of them aren't. And it's just really hard to tell the difference. And the other thing that I do find that's really challenging is online reviews, because I, I know we had, we had spoke kind of before we started recording that sometimes online reviews, you know, I can read them and I can hear that that parent or caregiver just didn't figure out that key feature of their car seat. And so to them, this is the worst car seat ever. And, and they've written a review, um, but it's a really good car seat that we recommend a lot. It just requires, you know, has this little bit of a learning curve and they didn't figure that out. Um, there's a few other um, sources in Canada. There's uh, Safe Beginnings as well, who, um, uh, you know, Holly from Safe Beginnings, I know, mm-hmm. is on some of the other uh, podcast recordings. And um, and she's created a, a little list of different kinds of car seats as well. Um, yeah. And there's, a, there's uh-huh. a few others out there who have been trained as child passenger safety technicians. But it's important to find that information in Canada because those are the kinds of car seats that you can access and that you can purchase. They do have a lot more variety and selection in the U.S., but those car seats would not be legal uh, to use for us in Canada. So we would buy Canadian car seats. So it's important to find, um, you know, trusted Canadian sources as well of that information. There was one other thing I totally yeah. forgot to mention, and that's with the manufacturers as well. And mm. so the manufacturer websites they have, um, they often have when I when I've asked people like, where did you find information about how to install your car seat? And they say YouTube. Well, was it YouTube where you just typed it in randomly? Or did you go to that manufacturer's website and find their YouTube videos that they've created for how to install their car seats? And that can be really helpful to find information with the manufacturer about how to use their seats. Because ultimately, that's what a child passenger safety technician is going to do. They're going to find that information about how to use your seat that was written by or created by your car seat manufacturer. And sometimes Mm -hmm. also you can ask them questions directly on, you know, in their DMs on Instagram and different other uh, platforms as well, um, or send them an email. Um, Or you can often find answers to those questions in the FAQs or frequently asked questions on the car seat manufacturer's websites as well. 
Those are great tips. And uh, let's keep with the manufacturer line of discussion. Uh, Katie and Jessica, if you could speak to the manufacturers, <laughs> what one thing, one, two, or two things that you would say, you know, please improve this um, in the car seats, in the rear-facing car seats that you manufacture, given your experience with these rear-facing car seats. Katie, um, maybe you could start. If there were two things I'd want fixed, one would be the buckles. I have an issue with how many times you have to strap them in, especially if you're trying to get in and out of somewhere really quick. Uh, and number two would be making them easier to level. So okay. sometimes they kind of, they're tilting, right? And if you're in a rush, you have to make sure that it's square or else it's not safe. But taking the time to do that is is tricky sometimes. Right. Yeah, those are two excellent, excellent points. Jessica, what would what message would you give to manufacturers if you could talk to them directly? Um, I think it'd be really great if they, again, to my situation, instead of giving like the weight and height limit on the car seat uh, manual, also add um, the front to back space that the seat takes up. That would have made my car seat searching a billion times easier if I could have been like, oh, this one takes up this many inches front to back and this one takes up six inches more. So this one would work better for me. Like it would have made that so much easier for me. So if they could include that in their manuals or something. And my question to you is how did you figure it out? How did you fi figure out which ones were going to be the shortest front to back? Um, I asked my friend who is a CPST. She has three kids and I told her what seat I had and that it was, it didn't fit. Like there was no way it was going to fit in my car. So she told me which one to get. And she told me that it takes up less space front to back. Mm. So I went and got that one and it fit like a glove. Gotcha. So she like heard what your yeah. needs were, <laughs> knew, knew you, knew what yeah. your budget was, knew how big your exactly. kid was, you know, is he a tall skinny guy or yeah. kind of around, you know, like she yeah. knew what your kid, what your kiddo was and gave you, you know, the yeah. one or two options that were going to meet your needs. And yeah. we did pick one. So that, that can be really helpful. We did pick one with a higher weight limit too, because that was something my son is like really short, but really heavy. <laughs> so, um, I wanted to keep him rear facing longer. So that was something that was important to me was finding a seat that fit my car and would fit him more than likely the weight instead of the length. Yeah. So you knew that, again, you were going to need a, you know, for a, for a heavier, yeah. heavier yeah. kid um, to stay rear facing. So you needed that higher weight yeah, limit as well. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Catherine, let me, let me um, wrap up this episode with exactly that message. Um, can you talk to us a little bit about why rear facing as long as possible is the safest way to go? Absolutely. So we all know we all start off rear facing, right? So like babies come home from the hospital or, you know, are taking making their first ride and they have really large heads and weak necks. Right. So we've always known that, you know, no one's ever questioned the fact that that infants and babies were going to ride facing the back of the car. Um, and one of the, the reasons is because they do need that recline, of course, to be able to maintain their airway. And that's one way to do it. But the other the big reason is, um, you know, how 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 people are injured in car crashes. And so we're, we're trying to make sure that a child is going to have a better chance of being uninjured or less injured in the case of a collision. And what we know is that most serious and most seriously, you know, and fatal collisions have a frontal aspect. So the car is going to hit something and it's going in a forward motion. And so everything in the car is going to move towards that point of impact. And in this case, the most common and the most serious point of impact is a frontal point of impact. And so we know that for us, we've got a seatbelt that's holding us back and possibly an airbag that's going to protect us who, you know, as the driver. Um, but we want to make sure that that little baby with that really big head that takes up 25% of their of their body mass, um, rather than having their head go forward, they're 
turned the other way. And so the back of the car seat catches and cradles their head, neck and spine, keeps it aligned. And so th- they don't have a harness or a seat belt or an airbag that's protecting them. The whole back of the seat is going to catch and cradle that child. Um, and then it's going to rebound back up as well. But that's that first point of impact. That's that's how mm-hmm. that um, how that child is is restrained. And it's because they have that large head and that weak neck that we know that this is so important for them. Um, and so what's changed in the last few years is we've always known that newborns had a large head and a weak neck and that they needed this rear facing position. But now we know also that like two year olds and three year olds and even four year olds have more in common physiologically with a newborn than they do with an adult. Right. And so they are more like, you know, they're they're not a, they're not a little adult. They're a big baby. Right. They have still a larger head and a weaker neck. And so we know that rear facing is going to give them the best protection in that sudden stop or that crash uh, to make sure that they, you know, you say, never tell me the odds. Well, the odds are better for them in that most common and most commonly fatal type of crash to be the best protected. Mm. Yeah. And, and so I mean, people are know this. I know Jessica knows this and Katie knows this. We've got some some people who have lots of, you know, a CPST friend and a mom who does injury prevention. So, you know, the word is getting out there and we are finding that that that's what something parents and caregivers are looking for. They're looking to be able to rear face their kiddos, not just to age two, but also to age three and even age four, you right. know, and that's what they're looking for in a car seat. And they're looking for that uh, sometimes in a small car and sometimes in a car that's on the go. So, yeah, and that's something that's important to a lot of people. Thanks, Catherine. I think you explained that so well in terms of how it cradles, how it receives the impact. I mean, I often, you know, talk about, you know, the safest way for all of us to travel, except perhaps the driver, because they need to know where they're going, is rear facing because it does, you know, absorb the impact uh, all that better. So, Um, I'm afraid we're out of time, unfortunately, but (laughs) thank you so much, uh, Jessica, Katie, Catherine. It's been wonderful having you on the podcast today. It's been a really animated conversation. Uh, We could have this conversation for much longer, but thanks for spending the time with me today. Thank you so much for having us. Thanks for having us. On the next episode of Popping the Bubble Wrap, front and center, we are talking again about car seats, but we're turning our attention to forward-facing seats. These work differently than rear-facing seats, and you'll definitely want to check out our tips and tricks. Thanks so much for listening to this episode. Popping the Bubble Wrap is a podcast of Parachute, Canada's national injury prevention charity. We release episodes monthly. Visit us at parachute.ca and follow us on Instagram and Facebook at Parachute Canada. Don't keep us a secret though. Help other parents find this podcast by sharing the link to popping the bubble wrap and taking a second to submit a review. It really does help. Popping the bubble wrap is produced by Story Studio Network.